Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 2 VGC ladder in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and provide live commentary as I go. In this video, I'm going to be trying out a team featuring Mistrevis. Now, Fluttermane is one of, if not the most common Pokemon in the format right now, but Mistrevis gets very little love. Fun fact, Mistrevis actually got second at the US National Championships in 2013, and it has a couple of niches in the format. First of all, it's got access to Levitate, meaning that you won't take damage from ground-type attacks, which is valuable. You also get access to Trick Room, Will-O-Wisp, Pain Split, and Hex, which is really nice in terms of utility. And Mistrevis actually matches up pretty well into a fair amount of common Pokemon, including Great Tusk as well as Iron Hands. And so, it's an effective Trick Room user, but can also deal pretty decent damage. The team also has Iron Jugulus for a Tailwind route, and you also have strong attackers like Nasty Plot, Golden Go, Life Orb, Great Tusk, as well as Baxcalibur. So, as always, I'll do a quick breakdown of the team, but if you want to just skip to the battle, check out the timestamps down below and thanks so much as always for watching if you enjoyed really appreciate it if you consider leaving a like on the video or subscribing to the channel it really helps out a ton anyway let's get started First of all, a huge thank you to Chief Ross for building and sharing this team. I've linked their Twitter down in the description below, as well as a rental and a paste if you want to try it out yourselves. And question of the day, with us using Mistrevis, I want to know what Eviolite Pokemon you think is currently being slept on. So, we have to talk about Mistrevis, right? The whole idea behind this Pokemon is that one, it's actually really bulky thanks to Eviolite. Two, having Levitate is really, really nice. And three, you can actually wall some really common Pokemon in Iron Hands and Great Tusk. In addition, you can also use Mistrevis to just set up Trick Room. Mistrevis is actually decently fast, right? It's base 85 speed. And so you don't necessarily always need to utilize Trick Room, but Trick Room can be really valuable since a lot of the attackers on this team don't have that much speed investment. Like Golden Go has no speed investment, Tusk has no speed investment, Baxcalibur has no speed investment. Investment, right and so against like the teams that are uh, uh kind of on the faster end right your kind of flutter mains or your iron bundles trick room obviously can be really valuable uh, electric terra exists here basically because you have the levitate and so you essentially don't have any weaknesses after the electric terra which i think is really cool as well and the idea is that this pokemon can just stay on the field for a really long time and also divert attention away from the main attackers Raichu is actually one of the go-to leads with the Mistrevis here, and even though that's fairly passive, it allows you to pressure Fake Out into Trick Room immediately. Then turn two, you can go for like Will-O-Wisp into Volt Switch, for example which in itself is fairly valuable. You can also just lead Raichu Mistrevis and just go straight for Volt Switch into Trick Room. And against like the faster teams that have like the bundles and the Flutter Mains, for example, uh, the Raichu often will be slower because you're not max speed investment here. So you'll be able to pivot out and then set up Trick Room and then get a Trick Room Sweeper in, which is really nice. And so this is Assault Vest, but it's kind of unconventional. As you can see, it's really defensive, doesn't really have any special attack uh, investment, nor is it fast. Um, but the idea is that the Raichu can just stay in the field for a really long time, can pressure with Volt Switch and also has Feint, which is pretty nice and breaking through protects so well, that's one other component of the team uh, and then now we've got the main attackers right so this is nasty plot golden go this fairly straightforward max hp you've got leftovers as well uh, ghost terror exists here basically to one increase your damage output of shadow ball which i feel like people don't really expect from golden go too much and two obviously it gets rid of the steel typing which is fairly valuable since arcanine is pretty common in the format and so making sure that you can just survive a flare blitz and then you know either nasty plot or retaliate back with the shadow ball is pretty valuable Great Tusk is one of the other sweepers on this team, and the way this Great Tusk works is that it actually has no speed investment, right? Which might be kind of surprising, but you have max special defense investment and attack investment, so it's meant to optimize for damage, but... The whole point of the special defense investment is to cover for how poor, you know, Great Tusk special defense normally is. And with even with no speed investment, like under Tailwind from Jugulus, the Great Tusk will essentially outspeed uh, any Pokemon that doesn't really have a major speed boost, which is a great benchmark. In addition, you know, you are slow enough where you can take advantage of Mr. Viz's Trick Room as well. And so, yeah, it's like optimized for both of those, which I think is really, really cool. Finally, you've got the Baxcalibur here in terms of the sweepers. This is just a loaded dice set with Ice Shard, Icicle Spear, and Glaive Rush, and Poison Terra here to, you know, help out against Golden Go in particular and, you know, uh, fighting type attacks as well. Finally, Iron Jugulus here exists for a Tailwind route, and so you can lead like Jugulus plus Tusk, for example, and just go Tailwind plus Earthquake. Tailwind Ground Terra, Headlong Rush, Earthquake is really powerful. Uh, if you want to go the you know Tailwind route like Jugulus, Tusk, Golden, go Baxcalibur is a really solid four. If you want to go the Trick Room route, like you could go Raichu Mistrevis as a lead, but you can also you can really lead any anything with Mistrevis here, like Golden Go, Tusk, Baxcalibur, all of them. Uh, like divert attention away from Mistrevis because these three Pokemon all can deal massive amounts of damage and in those setups you can just like go for a protect and then set up for Trick Room which is pretty cool as well so ultimately this team utilizes two means of speed control and they're both pretty valuable so yeah it's kind of figuring out which one you think you can extract more value from throughout the course of the game and Mistrevis is a Pokemon that often will just stay on the field for the entirety of the battle since it's really difficult to knock out so yeah 
So in terms of weaknesses, the first thing I'll call out is that the Mischievous becomes fairly ineffective if you have a Taunt user on the opposing side. And so like Covert Cloak Talonflame in general can be pretty annoying because if you lead Raichu Mischievous, it's tempting to like fake out into, you know, going for Trick Room, for example. But in a closed team sheet environment, if you don't know about Taunt or Covert Cloak, for example, uh, and Mischievous gets taunted, it puts Mischievous in a really awkward spot. Because then more or less you're like forced to switch out or just stay in and like be relatively ineffective for a couple of turns. And so that's one thing to watch out for. I think another thing to note is that neither Iron Jungle Jugulus nor Mischievous have Protect here, and so the two Pokemon that aim for speed control on this team, of course, can get doubled up into, and if you're playing up against this team, like, maybe sometimes you have to respect Protect, but in a, now that you know about the team, like, and knowing that neither Pokemon have Protect, you can try to double up onto a slot to try to KO it before they're able to really get too much value. That's a little bit harder to do against Jugulus, honestly, because it does have the booster energy, but knowing it doesn't have Protect means you can expose it in itself, so that's one thing to watch out for. I think also one thing you can do against this team, let's say they, like, Mischievous and Raichu is led, is, like, intentionally not pick up knockouts and kind of force them to you know awkwardly switch into one of the trick room sweepers in golden go you know the tusk or the backscalibur so that's one thing to watch out for i think uh Ground types can still be really strong against the primary sweepers, like Golden Go, Tusk, and Backscalibur, Raichu, right? Like, they, they all take a good amount of damage from ground-type attacks. Obviously, Mischievous can cover for it with Will-O-Wisp, though, and, like, a lot of the ground-type Pokemon or ground-type attackers are physically oriented, right? And so, it's not necessarily that easy. Intimidate's obviously pretty valuable against the Great Tusk, although Life Orb plus Ground Terra is just a fairly nasty combination, but since you have two physical attackers, being able to decrease their attack is somewhat valuable. And against the Golden Go... Uh, it's not choice specs, right? And knowing that it's Ghost Terra, you can also utilize to, to your advantage as well. Because it's not choice specs, right? Like, the, the Make It Rain won't do as much damage, and this Golden Go in particular doesn't have the combination of, like, the Steel Make It Rain, uh, Steel Terra Make It Rain plus choice specs, and so, on average, the Make It Rain is doing a lot less damage than, like, the most strong Golden Go that you can run into, and so you, you can, you know, potentially utilize that as well. And for, yeah, kind of the leftovers Golden Go sets, you're ideally trying to burst it down as quickly as possible, like, don't give it the opportunity to set up multiple nasty plots. And against Jugulus, like, you want to be really careful about bringing special attackers, right? For example, Jugulus is really good into, say, NDD Armor Rouge. Uh, so if you have that on your team and you see a Jugulus on the opposing side, you might want to, like, consider twice as to whether or not you actually want to bring it. I think Jugulus loses value if it's not actually able to go up one against, like, you know, special attackers because then Snarl becomes a little bit less effective. Uh, and so you can keep that in mind as well. So, yeah, those are just a couple of points. Let's get started. No way, there is a Patchy Risu here. Gardevoir, Iron Treads, Talonflame, Dragonite, and the Iron Bundle. Okay. So, I prefer to go with the Trick Room route here. I could go with the Raichu plus the Mischievous lead. Golden Go feels pretty solid here. I like Tusk a little bit more than Excalibur here, I think. Okay, let's go with this. So with Raichu, I could theoretically fake out into Trick Room on turn 1. I could Volt Switch into Trick Room. I could Electric Terra, Mischievous as well. Talonflame is one of the Pokemon that can be like a little bit annoying to fight against. I think the other tricky thing about Talonflame is not knowing in a best of one environment whether or not it's like Ghost Terra or Covert Cloak, for example. And if it's either, obviously, Fake Out becomes a little bit harder to execute, but we'll see. The main thing is whether or not they're really actually going to bother, like, taunting Mischievous, right? But, even though Mischievous isn't that common in VGC, I do think if people see it, they probably would expect Trick Room. So it kind of depends on the item on Talonflame. Like, if they're not Covert Cloak, Fake Out into Trick Room is really safe, and then we can Volt Switch uh, and start Hexing, for example. But let's see if they even lead Talonflame. I also haven't really gone up against Pachirisu this gen, so that's kind of cool to see. But yeah, Mr. Viss and Pachirisu on the teams here make it uh, pretty exciting, I think. Maybe Gardevoir and Iron Shreds. Okay. That's uh, fine by me. What do I want to do here? Shreds is booster energy for an attack boost. Okay. Um, it's pretty free to fake out treads and trick room. I am worried about imprisoned Gardevoir here, though, so I actually am kind of inclined to go for Will O Wisp here and uh, fake out. Nice, they don't protect. 
Okay, Treads flinches. Nice. Is Gardevoir clicking Trick Room here? Like, does it not have Imprisoned? It was trying to reverse my Trick Room. The Gardevoir's just slower than Mischievous. <laughs> they actually had Misty Terrain, which is really cool as well, but unfortunately for them, they were slower. Yeah, what? Is it Min Speed Gardevoir? Interesting. I mean, we're not Min Speed on the Mischievous here. I guess Mischievous isn't exactly the slowest Pokemon, but either way, that puts them in a pretty tough situation. Um... I would like to Volt Switch. I mean, I want to bring Tusk out, but with how slow their Gardevoir is, I actually have to be a little bit careful, I think. Hmm. Like, I don't necessarily need to Trick Room right now, right? Especially if they're going for a Ground-type attack into the Raichu slot. I'm actually just going to double up on a Gardevoir, and then try to Trick Room next turn, I think. Oh, okay, they go for Helping Hand. Sure. And earthquake. Okay, works for me. The reason why this is fine is because now I get the free switch and integrate Tusk, and with Tusk, I can actually potentially just ground Terra or Earthquake right now. Uh, Raichu actually survives that as well. Nice. So we'll get a little bit of chip damage on the Gardevoir, but yeah, the main thing is I just didn't want to set up Trick Room immediately right now. It's good damage with Hex as well. Citrus Gardevoir with Helping Hand and Misty Terrain. That's a first. That's definitely a first. Okay. Yeah, but this is fine. I think now I'm willing to click uh, Trick Room. I will Trick Room and... You go for a Helping Hand Earthquake. Like, I think it's fine to just give up Raichu from this position. I could also just Thunderbolt Hex Gardevoir here, right? But I think... No, because they're just going to KO Raichu. Yeah, so... Uh, we should Trick Room here. Trick Room... I guess faint for a little bit of free damage on the way out. Iron Head onto Mr. Bass, okay. Woo! Heal Pulse, okay. This is a fascinating Gardevoir sand. I actually end up flinching as well. <laughs> This has been such an awkward early game. But this is clearly a very defensive Gardevoir. Misty Terrain, Heal Pulse, Helping Hand. I just want them to KO Raichu, honestly. Um, honestly, Tusk should take a Helping Hand EQ pretty well. Well, actually, no. I'm, I, I think I'm just going to Volt Switch here. I'm going to Pain Split and Volt Switch. Alright, they just Earthquake this time around. Cool, so I'll finally get the free switch in a Tusk, which was I was looking for, but yeah, this Gardevoir set is so far from what I expected, and fortunately for us, it was slower than Mischievous, but if it were faster, I would have been in a lot of trouble with Misty Terrain. But it makes sense, I'm assuming it just has no speed investment at all, and it's um, really bulky with Citrus. And it does have Moonblast, okay. Cool, but now I have confirmed you don't have Protect on the Gardevoir, that in itself is a big deal. And so, I can just bring out the Great Tusk right now. I don't think we need a Terra Tusk here, honestly. Trick Room plus Golden Go being in the back is really good against them, so I think we just click Trick Room here and just click Earthquake. Yeah. Mistrevis is also really solid into a lot of their final Pokemon, right? Like, I can will wisp Dragonite. Okay, that's probably... I would think Dragonite coming in, but we'll see. Talonflame. Yep, makes sense. Okay. So get Life Orb Earthquake off into the Gardevoir slot. That's enough for KO. Nice. Now I get Trick Room, finally. I just wanted to be a little bit careful here, like, Raichu isn't that important for me, whereas, like, Golden Go and Great Tusk are both so much better offensively, so I just didn't want either of those Pokemon, like, coming in and taking damage, which is why I played somewhat passively the first couple of turns, but being able to burn the the uh, Iron Treads immediately obviously put us into a really good spot. Treads comes back out, sure. Um, They might have Will-O-Wisp. I'm happy to Pain Split here into... Talonflame. 
I think Pain Split and just Protect here is okay with me. Mm, that's a little bit passive. I could switch this out into Golden Go. I could also Ground Terra this. Ground Terra this is actually probably the best bet. Pain Split into you. Ground Terra. A long rush. I think EQ actually probably gets the chaos. I don't think I needed to go for this, but I think it's fine. Uh, the ground terror here mainly is to just make sure I don't get dunked on by a brave bird immediately. But yeah, with Golden Go in the back, and I mean Mr. Vis can actually wall Town Flame decently well. Okay, they're not going for a brave bird, so we'll heal back a little bit. Okay, Wings is broken. Headlong Rush here should KO the Treads. They're probably going for a will o -Wisp if I had to guess them, but that's fine. <laughs> Critical hit just really for overkill. That's Life Orb, Ground Terror boosted. I just want to make sure I didn't faint to, like, a, you know, Brave Bird uh, from Town Flame's End. Yep, it is will o -Wisp. Now, while the burn is a little bit annoying, it's fine. Like, Town Flame doesn't really have recovery, so I can, you know, chip away at it with Hex, and then... Whatever their final Pokemon is, I don't think can take the combo of Tusk and um, Mischievous pretty like well right now. Is that Dragonite? Go ahead. Lum Dragonite's the one thing I'm a little concerned about at the moment, but if it's not Lum, I think we're in great shape. Double check the field state. Three turns of Trick Room left. We'll go for Will O Wisp onto the Dragonite. Happy to just close combat into Town Flame. Like the sooner Tusk faints and I get to switch it into Golden Go, the better. So, Dragonite's gonna Terra here, presumably. Oh, it's Talonflame Terra and Ghost? Flying, okay. Uh, that will allow for a pretty strong Brave Bird, actually. So, that makes sense, but now you're weak to make, not weak, but make it rain is stronger, as Dragonite actually outspeeds us under Trick Room and KOs us with Ice Spinner, and that's fine. As long as will o -Wisp connects here, um... I mean, either way, Golden Go gets put into a pretty good spot, right? Because they're probably gonna Brave Bird and take a ton of Recoil. Lilith does not miss. Nice job, Mischievous. Okay. Yep, and there's Brave Bird. That's fine. Yeah, it is less than half. Nice. Mischievous is just so defensive. This is like max defense, max special defense with Eviolite, right, right? So. I get a free switch into Golden Go. Dragonite is burned, so I'm not really worried about the damage output from that. Um, I think here I'm honestly happy to just click Hex into Talonflame and Shadow Ball into it. Maybe Talonflame protects here. We've only seen Brave Bird so far in Will O Wisp, Tailwind. Often the last move will be like Taunt or Protect, but Dragonite being burnt here doesn't pressure either Pokemon that much, especially given that it's max HP Golden Go and max defenses on Mischievous. But you can see the value Mischievous had for us, right? It just kind of stayed on the field the entire game, was able to burn multiple physical attackers, was able to set up Trick Room for us as well. So Dragonet's got Earthquake here. It's going to hit Golden Go for super effective, but it's not really that much damage. And this double up should knock out the Talon Flame unless it's like ultra specially defensive. There's Hex. Beautiful. The Misty Terrain tech was really cool though. Like the game would have played out really differently if we ended up being uh, slower than Gardevoir there. So, luckily for us, we were, uh, yeah, able to move first. But I've never seen a Gardevoir set like that before, and I think that's very, very cool. But Mr. Vis put in so much work for us in this one. Now we can go for a Hex on a Dragonite. It's the last turn of Trick Room. We know Dragonite's faster. Protect here. Get Leftovers Recovery. And help us against a crit. And they just sort of quick again. Cool. I mean, Dragonite shouldn't really be able to win in this position. Like, even if we were to crit Golden Go, I don't, like, I don't even, what moves would you have against the Mischievous that with the crit KO? Because I could just keep going, bet like, alternating between my attacks, right? Uh, Pain Split for a little bit of recovery. But, yeah. Looks like a Salt Vest Dragonite to me, which would make sense. They are also obviously really slow here. Trick Room expires. I'll just go for Hex and make it rain. Okay. And make it rain gets the KO, finally. Nice. 
Really interesting game. And I'm very curious about their EV spreads because their Dragonite and their Gardevoir were both like ultra, ultra slow there. So, yeah. But, you know, Mischievous, I feel like, is a Pokemon I haven't... Actually, I mean, I haven't used it in Scarlet and Violet at all. And this Pokemon did make the finals of the 2013 National Championships as a Trick Room Setter, which is pretty cool. But, yeah. Misty Terrain Gardevoir, really interesting. And at the end of the day, Mischievous is actually base 85 speed, right? Um... But I feel like as a Trick Room user, I'm always just inclined to think I'm going to be moving after my opponent. So, shout out to Mischievous outspeeding Gardevoir in that one, because that kind of defined the entire game. And once we got the burn onto Treads, I felt really confident uh, about our position, because like the Gardevoir was ultra passive on their side. But what a, what a fun first game here. Okay, they've got Fluttermane, so I definitely got to bring Mischievous. Tusk, Iron Hands, NDD, Armor Rouge, Talonflame. Uh, Jugulus is actually pretty interesting here, but Jugulus Mischievous doesn't really synergize that well, because it's like, you get the booster energy, but you want a Trick Room with this. But Snarl is so nice into NDD Armor Rouge. Mm. What's like their most oppressive lead? Probably Tusk plus the Fluttermane. Uh, Raichu is interesting here. I could bring it for Fake Out, but if they were to switch in NDD, things would get ugly pretty quickly. Excalibur feels really good here. My own Tusk is amazing damage-wise. <sighs> Tusk, Golden Go, Excalibur is a good trio offensively here. Chugulus honestly is pretty solid here, though, so I think I'm actually going to bring it. Even just for a single Snarl to start the game, like, that is enough justification to consider it. What do I want in the back? Tusk. Backs. <sighs> Golden Gold doesn't feel that good here, right? Like, I don't have that many opportunities to Nasty Plot. They have a ton of super effective damage into me between Tusk, Talonflame, um, Armor Rouge... So yeah, let's try this out. So not super conventional with this team, but it's going to be NDD Armor Rouge. Okay. That works for me. With Jugulus now, I can Snarl. Ah, this is actually really interesting because I can use Mischievous to potentially reverse a Trick Room from the opposing side as well. My only fear is that it's like weak armor, weakness policy Armor Rouge. But I'm honestly pretty down to just start this with the Snarl. Uh, question is what I want to do with Mischievous. Like, honestly, hexing into Armor Rouge and Snarling doesn't seem too bad. I don't want to click Trick Room immediately. Okay, they're going to go for a Terra, sure. Grass Terra would make sense. Hmm, Dark Terra. Okay. Pretty cool. Nice. Snarl doesn't miss. That did... That was a crit on Tindy, I'm sure. But uh, that did so much. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you're at minus one. Indy goes for Psychic. Oh, it's a... Uh... Ah, it's Covert Cloak Armor Rouge. Okay. Uh, that makes things pretty interesting. Yeah, that actually... Puts me in a tricky spot. They should trick room here, honestly. Want a pain split armor rouge? Dark pulse into NDD. Okay, we KO NDD. Yeah, Dark Terra plus uh, Covert Cloak. Pretty good combo to have here. Mischievous being able to move first is so nice for us here, though, I will say. Yep, and they set up Trick Room. Okay. Could have read into that and, like, potentially reversed it. I don't know if that's worth it. Iron Hands coming out now makes sense. Hmm. 
Well, I would love to reverse Trick Room right now. It's kind of close as to whether or not expanding Force KOs, but reversing Trick Room would be pretty huge for us. Dark Terror plus Covert Cloak was like probably the worst thing for Iron Jugulus to run into here. If I manage to reverse Trick Room, I think Great Tusk just wins this game. Actually, what would they have in the back? I don't think I want to target Armourish here. Uh, we should still go for it, actually, in case they double up onto Flutter. But they end up Drain Punching into Jugulus for a crit, okay. But if we survive Expanding Force here and I reverse Trick Room, I think we just win. Nice job, Mr. Biss. Cool. Hey, Jugulus gets Air Slash off. Not enough for a KO, but that's fine. This is perfect. Trick Room is reversed. Now I can Dark Pulse into the Armor Rouge and Pain Split into Iron Hands. And that puts us in a really good spot, I think. As long as they don't get Trick Room up, right? Because, like, they've already committed their Terra. Um, I have the faster Pokemon in the back with the Tusk. I still have my Terra conserved as well. And we're going for Dark Pulse here because Air Slash can actually miss. And missing into my opponent setting up Trick Room again would actually be the one way for them to come back into the game given the current position. Obviously, I don't know what their last Pokemon is quite yet, but yeah. Pace split here is also just safer. I'd rather click that over will o -Wisp because we get so much utility from it. And it's fine for Jugulus to faint here. Yeah. Jugulus did what I needed to do in this game, which was force a terror out at Arm Rouge. You know, managed to KO the NDD as well. We did get a little lucky with that critical hit, of course, but... Um, yeah, like, one of the values of Jugulus is obviously Snarling into NDD Arm Rouge. We happen to actually run into a pretty unique combo there with the Dark Terra and the Covert Cloak, but in the end, it's fine. Um, I'm happy to just go out into Great Tusk right now. They bring out Fluttermane. Okay. So, with Fluttermane coming out here, I actually think it's fine to... Uh, I could just Ground Terra, right? Like, you shouldn't be able to KO me as long as I Ground Terra. So, Will-O-Wisp into Hands, Ground Terra, EQ. Wait, uh, if they're... F we haven't seen Sash yet, right? So, I want to assume Sash Fluttermane. Fluttermane could protect, but Ground EQ should just KO... I think it's fine to just Hex Flutter main, Ground Terra, EQ. I guess the one thing here is, like, if they actually were able to KO Tusk with... But this is a really specially defensive Tusk. It's, like, max special defense. Actually, yeah, because of that, I think even if you're choice spec, you don't KO here. And they just Dazzling. Cool. Let's game over. Nice. There is the Earthquake. And that will be a K on Tire Hands. Looks like Focus Sash on the Flutter main. Yep. Yeah, the idea here is I don't think there was really much my opponent could have done. Even if Hands had Protect, it would have been fine because Flutter is not really doing that much into us. And then Earthquake is just so powerful in this position. So Hex finishes off Flutter main. And it feels satisfying to get a KO onto a Mischievous with our. or onto Flutter main with our Mischievous here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. I think in that game, it was interesting mainly because, yeah, like, they actually set up Trick Room first, and, like, our Pokemon are actually a little bit faster, but um, the Armor Rouge wasn't able to do that much, and then the Pain Split from Mr. Biss was really, really huge for us, allowing to heal back up, and so, yeah. But once again, you can see the utility of Mr. Biss, right? Like, hung on on the field for a really long time, and it was kind of difficult for my opponent to just KO it. Okay, we've got Tusk Talon here. Uh, I featured a version of this team on the channel fairly recently. This is just one of the strongest archetypes that exists in the format right now. And Please it's done very well throughout the first couple of regionals in this format. So, yeah. How do we want to approach this? I think in general, like, Mischievous is amazing into this team because it can Will-O-Wisp almost everything, obviously, which is really nice. Um, part of what I'm thinking about here is what else we want to bring. 
Because, like, Taunt Talonflame, once again, is kind of annoying, but to circumvent that, I could just go with the Mischievous plus the Raichu lead. Mischievous, Raichu. Uh, Backscalibur with Spear is really solid here, right? I, we're definitely not bringing Jugulus into this one, I think. It's just not very good into most of the team. So then it's between two of the final three. Uh, Golden Go is Ghost Terra. Mm. I mean, Tusk offensively is so good here. I feel like I have to bring it. And then it's between Bax and Golden Go. I think I like Golden Go a little bit more. Actually, no, I'm going to go with Bax. And the reason for that is because of the Icicle Spear. I think being able to Icicle Spear, Fluttermane, Tusk, and Talonflame is really valuable here. So, let's see. But either way, yeah, one of the classic leads with this team is just Raichu plus Mischievous. So, with this, I can go, like, Fake Out into Trick Room Turn 1, which is pretty strong in itself. They're going to go with Talonflame plus the Fluttermane, sure. Uh, I think the main debate here is whether or not I should consider Terroring. Because otherwise, Shadow Ball obviously can kind of hurt. But I'm going to go fake out on a Talonflame. I would like to conserve my Terra, honestly. Mm. We saw their booster energy. Okay. I'm just going to Trick Room and fake out turn one here. Hopefully it's not Covert Cloak. Okay, nice. Yeah, you just go for Shadow Ball, that's fine. Okay, we do survive. Um, I don't know though, if they were max special attack, I don't know if like, cause I think with max special attack, they actually can't get the knockout there. So maybe I should have gone for Terra to be a little bit safer. In the end, it works out here. Um, I think personally, uh, I don't really want to Volt Switch here, right? Because I don't want to take damage with what I have in the back. Uh, it's pretty awkward because I actually really would love to conserve the Mischievous here. I could just Hex Thunderbolt. Pretty good chip damage, honestly. It's more than chip. Raichu gets t bolt off into Talonflame. Oh, it survives on like one. Although that's fine, I guess, because I can just click a uh, faint into it, right? But it, I don't know. I've got Baxcalibur in the back as well as a okay, Tailwind. What? Uh, okay. I think that makes this game really hard for them, honestly. It's interesting, because now like, I definitely just outspeed everything in the back. Uh, maybe they just forgot about Trick Room, or it was a misclick. Anyway, um, it's pretty free to just go into Tusk now. I actually think maybe it was better to go into Baxcalibur for High School Spear. But they don't have any ground switch-ins, so... Headlong Rush here is just fairly strong. And I'm. This is the perfect opportunity to now volt switch because yeah, we'll outspeed both. Okay, Mr. Rivers goes for protect. Yeah, this is fine. Like I'm so offensively po well positioned now going into this next turn. But yeah, I don't. Tailwind only hurts you because uh, unless they already had faster Pokemon in the back, but it's like you, you just have more value clicking any other move there, in my opinion. So Raichu right, pivots out. And let's go to Baxcalibur now. So we have our two most offensive Pokemon on the team out. I would have liked to conserve Mischievous ideally, just because it's pretty solid into a lot of those physical attackers. But yeah, I mean, the thing is like now, what do you really do? Who do you bring out? Tyranitar is your best bet, I think. And then like you go for Flying Terra immediately. But like, 
One thing I could do if they bring out T-Tar is just like click Earthquake with Great, Great Tusk and then just Icicle Spear into Tyranitar because that covers for it staying in regular form. Or not regular form, like not terroring. And then if it terrors into Flying, Icicle Spear plus EQ. Well, I would think Icicle Spear if we, with the loaded dice here, can get the knockout. The one thing we'd have to be careful about is like KOing ourselves with Earthquake. But they actually just go into Bundle. Okay. Ah, uh, Bundle's pretty annoying, I guess, no? That's a good switch in. Um, Raichu is faint. We have Glaive Rush. We obviously have Dazzling Gleam. How long rush onto this, this slot is essentially a KO? Mm. Okay, I mean, I'm down to Headlong Rush here. And just Glaive Rush into bundle maybe flutter switches here oh bundle protects okay i actually think that i don't want to say it wins me the game quite yet but i think it's gonna be really hard for my opponent to win now because i can just double up onto bundle this next turn for the win but they could go for a double protect so so far tailwind hasn't really worked against them because they had bundle in the back that's obviously ultra fast like we we're already going to be faster than them either way but curious what the final one is I guess the reality is if if it were anything other than T-Tar, well, it could be Gothitelle as well, I guess. Is that Tusk? It is T-Tar. Yeah, so like that's where like them setting up uh, Tailwind hurt them, right? Because there's like no benefit to doing that when Trick Room is up. Um, I would expect Flying Terror on this and Assault Vest, honestly. I still haven't Terrored either of my Pokemon yet. I think I'm fine going for ground Terra here. Hmm. Steel Terra in the back here. I think they should go for a double protect with this. I mean, I'm happy to just click close combat here, I think, and then Icicle Spear into... I also could have done that last turn, right? Um, close combat into Bundle. That was actually more optimal, in my opinion. I guess they could have gone Ghost Terra with Bundle, though. would have been the one downside. Yeah, so it's Flying Terra, but I Icicle Spirit into that slot. Okay. Oh, Bundle does get the double. That certainly makes things more interesting. That's the correct play, though, uh, for sure. I, I just, like... It's it's normally Assault Vest Tyranitar here, right? But with me clicking Icicle Spear, hedges for this. Oh, this should be a KO. It's pretty close. Nice, okay. With loaded dice, yeah, that's it. Sweet. So, like, my opponent would have had to not Terra with Tyranitar there to have been in better shape, but yeah, ultimately them clicking Tailwind meant that, like, like, they should have brought out Tyranitar a little bit sooner, I think, but I can get their hesitance as to why not. Um, in the end, like, both of the Pokemon that we're using here are pretty bulky, so I think even if they didn't click Tailwind, they'd still be in pretty good shape. The main thing is that, like, the opposing team just, like, doesn't have the best Trick Room matchup. So now everything expires. Um, we can just protect here. Glyph Rush. Nah, protect wasn't necessary, but yeah, I don't know. It's like, this is always pretty safe. Yeah, and they click Free Shrine to that slot. Because it's not like Bundle does much in a Backscalibur. That's one of the reasons why Backscalibur is a really solid pick in the format. And why Gavin Michaels won the uh, Oceania Internationals with it. Because with the... Dragon Fang, like you can just one shot bundle, which is a huge deal given how defensive bundle actually can be physically. Close combat and shard. So yeah, I think the one thing was like they, they protected bundle, right? If they we had traded bundle for Tyranitar, things could have gotten a little bit more interesting. I felt pretty good about Backscalibur's chances in the end game, right? But then they maybe didn't need to Terra the Tyranitar and things could have gotten a little dicier. So I think on that turn I maybe should have considered close combat bundle and just high school spear into Flutter main instead. In, uh, rather than split up the other way, because you saw that the bundle could actually survive the Glaive Rush from the Backscalibur without a way to boost the Dragon-type damage output. Okay, we've got Volcarona, Mousehole, Tusk, Golden Go, Dragonite, and the bundle for this one. Mm -mm -mm. Mischievous, Mischievous, Mischievous. With Will-O-Wisp, pretty solid. I think I'm mainly worried about Golden Go plus the Mouse Hole because it can go for like 
follow me into nasty plot. So I think we need to apply a little bit of pressure against Golden Goat early on. <sighs> the problem is I don't know if it's Covert Cloak. I don't know what Terra it is, but I think generally Tusk. I actually really like Tusk plus Mischievous here. And in the back, I don't think Raichu is it. I'm thinking backs in Golden Goat, but I actually think Jugulus is decent here with Snarl and Air Slash. So I, I don't mind going with that. I think like going with Trick Room in this game is a little more unlikely. I could, but I don't ne necessarily need to commit to it. Um... And for my final one, I, think I still kind of like Golden Go here. It's solid into their top two slash three mons. All right, let's try this out. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the fun things about this team is just the different amount of speed controls that you can utilize, whether it be Trick Room or Tailwind. And Tusk plus the Mischievous in itself is actually a pretty nice combo, right? So I'm prioritizing Tusk here because, like, Ground type damage is just so good into their entire team, right? So we can leverage that. And the one thing that obviously is immune to ground type attacks before a Terra is Dragonite, but Dragonite can just burn it with Mischievous. And Dragonite is kind of annoying for Tusk to go up against, though, so we'll have to be careful about that. And it's a very good lead by them. Dragonite and Mouse Hold. Okay. Uh, I honestly really want to try to one-shot Mouse Hold and then burn Dragonite. I think that's my ideal setup here. I could see them ghost terroring, but I could also see them just protecting. I also don't think it's a terrible idea to just actually protect in Will O Wisp turn one to scout out for what they want to do. Uh I don't know, what's the downside of just going for Terra immediately here? I'm just worried it's population bomb mouse hold, I guess. That's my one fear. Okay, I'm going for the Headlong Rush Willowist play, though. We'll see. And the Terra here is to make sure we don't faint to, like, a Terra Blast from Flying Dragonite. <laughs> yep, they're flying. Okay, let's see. Uh, I don't know. I think Protect will wisp also works, but I wanted to cover for Mouse Hold going for Follow Me and punish that heavily. Because if they went for Follow Me, we KO Mouse Hold, and then we burn Dragonite. I think it's a really good turn one for me. Then the second turn, I can probably consider setting up Trick Room and then switching out the Tusk immediately into Golden Go. Ah, it's Baby Daw Eyes, though. Okay. I didn't go for Close Combat, by the way, out of respect for the... Um, a ghost Terra there. They actually target Mischievous, though. Okay. I mean, if will o -Wisp doesn't miss, like, Mischievous is still in a really good spot. And then I can consider Trick Room next turn. We still one-shot Mouse Hold. Nice. Cool. So Mouse Hold actually ended up being fairly useless for my opponent. But this is the big one. Like, if we miss, then another Terra Blast will just KO me, and that becomes really problematic. Nice. We connect. Good job, Mischievous. Okay. See where we go from here. Now, I think I'll probably... I mean, the thing is, Tusk applies a lot of offensive pressure into anything else that's coming in right now. Like, the main thing I was worried about was Golden Go, right? Plus the Mouse Hold, but Golden Go's eliminated. Or sorry, Mouse Hold's eliminated, so, and Terra is gone now, so Golden Go becomes way less of a problem. So, pretty good board state overall. The one awkward thing is that this Tusk actually doesn't have speed investment, so Golden Go actually probably outspeeds us. But I think what I can do is now set up for a Tailwind game. So I'm happy to switch Tusk out into Golden Go. And Pain Split into Dragonite. Yeah, I don't think I even need a Trick Room right now, because the thing is, I can just bring out Jugulus after this turn, Tailwind, and then bring Tusk out, and then uh, click like Tailwind into Headlong Rush onto the Golden Ghost slot. And with Dragonite being burnt, I think that slot is effectively fairly useless at this point. So I like that setup more. Because the problem for me is if I end up Trick Rooming, like, I have uh, a Iron Jugulus with Booster Energy and no Protect, meaning like, it just doesn't do anything for me under Trick Room. So I think this play is pretty safe, right? Like, I don't really care about whether or not Mr. Vist gets an attack off at this point. I mainly needed it for that burn on turn one and got plenty of value out of it. 
even better. Golden Go protects. I'll take that. Was they Terra Blast? Sure. Yep. Into the Tusk slot. That's fine. Does like 28 damage. Pain Split now heals up significantly while getting some chip onto Dragonite as well. Sweet. Cool. Uh, with that, honestly, this next turn I'm down to just double up on a Golden Go. Shadow Ball plus Hex. Like, Dragonite just doesn't really do damage for my opponent right now. Shadow Ball. X. And, like, I mean, if their Golden Go clicks Make It Rain, sure. I mean, I, they, I don't actually see why they click Make It Rain. They should click Shadow Ball here. But, like, I don't really care. Like, both but my Pokemon can survive a Shadow Ball right now. We know they're not Choice Specs either. And Dragonite actually switches, which makes sense. Like, it's not doing anything for my opponent right now. But you can see how, like, a single burn has made my it, like, so difficult for my opponent to play the game, right? I like what they're going for here. They went for Nasty Pop, basically saying, okay, I really hope you don't knock me out this turn. And if I survive, then Golden Go can at least actually put in some work with the damage. But... I think the Hex Shadow Ball combo should just get the knockout here. And I went for this because I knew Golden Go protected last turn and Dragonite's just not doing any damage, right? So, Golden Go is now down. Cool. And now the Mr. Visk can just Will-O-Wisp into the Tusk slot as well, which is beautiful. Dragonite comes back out. We've barely taken damage so far. Uh, actually, I think it's better to just go protect into Trick Room now. And then... Uh, Terra Golden Go. Nasty Plot. Or Make It Rain. Honestly, I think there are plenty of ways we could win this game. Um, I, I think the, the route I'm taking is actually probably not the most optimal. I think the most optimal is like uh, Tailwinding with Jugulus. But I think we can win the game a little bit faster with this route right now. And I, I think either path is fine to take. Okay, they just click Earthquake. Tusk is faster than Dragonite. Not that that should be a major surprise, but it's good to confirm. Okay. And they Terra Blast Flutter, which is totally fine. Cool. And Trick Room gets set up. Okay. Yeah, now we can just go for... I'm happy to just... Oh, I, I was talking about Terra earlier. We obviously used our Terra. Um, which is fine. Like, we can just click Make It Rain now. And I'm happy to just Hex into Dragonite. Because I could see them protecting with uh, Tusk, but they don't. That does so much damage. Wow. Okay, Dragonite is KO'd. I'm go for Headlong Rush here on Golden Go, but at this point, another Hex should just finish off Great Tusk. Okay. Yeah, so I will... Yeah, it doesn't matter who I bring out here. We'll just bring out Tusk. Okay. Close combat. Hex. I mean, Mr. Vistus has just been amazing today, right? Like, I feel like it's had a phenomenal time into so many of the teams that we went up against. And did he even get KO'd across the four games? Maybe once, right? But overall, like, it just stayed on the field for essentially forever. Really disrupted my opponent's physical attackers. And also was able to, you know, divert a pressure away from its teammates in this one. So, yeah, I'm honestly really, really impressed by it after playing it with it here. Like, it put in... An absolutely phenomenal performance and i think it's cool to be able to utilize both this like trick room route uh, as well as this tailwind route so yeah really really had a fun one uh with this one so thank you so much as always for watching if you enjoy would really appreciate if you consider leaving a like or subscribing to the channel and i'll see you all next time all right peace